Raise high. This isn't just our battle cry. It's our call, our challenge. Because when you were called to Washington, you were called to higher expectations, to a higher standard. We are called here to advance knowledge, to serve society, to change the world. Is that too lofty, too aspirational? Is it simply too much to expect? Not if your classroom is a Smithsonian, the IMF, or on the doorstep of the Supreme Court. Not if you have access to the most hallowed institutions and formidable leaders. Not if you are given the tools to change minds, shape laws, influence entire fields of study, advance our way of life, change the course of history. From the nation's capital to the four corners of the earth, to far below the surface and far beyond our atmosphere, here, unique opportunities, the ones that many people work much of their lives to get, are within your reach from the moment you arrive. This is where you find new pathways for preventing global epidemics, where your unexpected friend propels a new scientific movement forward. This is where you push forward as a team to break records and reach new heights, where your classroom is 68 square miles of the most consequential land on earth. This is where you will make it happen. This is the George Washington University. And what we make is history. So stand up. Be bold. Take risks. Press on. Push harder. Raise high. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Anuj Marotra. I am the Dean of the School of Business at George Washington University. And it is such a pleasure to see you all here. Uh, I'm particularly uh, happy today to be in Shanghai for this very special episode for in the George Talks, George Talks Business Series. Um, on, we have been on the road for a while, and this has been something which has been terrific. I love your city, by the way. I've been just having a great time in Shanghai. And today, uh, our esteemed guest is Dr. Vivian Wang, who is a founding partner of the Beautiful Mind Capital, which is a leveraged buyout uh, fund, uh, on a, and it is focused on acquiring European uh, firms with some interest in China business, right? So we are really fortunate and honored to have you as our guest, Dr. Wang. Uh, and also joining me in moderating today's session is our own alumna, Isabella Zhang. And Isabella is a senior associate at ENY's transaction support practice in Shanghai. And she is also a member of the GWSB School, of Board, School, uh, Schools Advisory Board. Thank you very much, Isabella, for joining me today in moderating this session. You're welcome. When you first start your own company, obviously, it must be uh, some difficulties that you had faced before. Can mm -hmm. you share some of the challenges you face when you start your own company? Uh, actually, um, it's a very <laughs> obvious one, is a fundraising. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> to meet various uh, uh, LPs, we always call it in China, we know, you know, Wanli Chang Zhen Di Yifu is like a long march, you know, it's a really, really long march. Uh, although we uh, officially launched our fund last year in February, but, uh, you know, the communication with potential investors is already last about uh, two or three years. <laughs> All kinds of free jobs for them, all kinds of presentations, all kinds of uh, different questions, all, so a lot of things, I think. Yeah. So, so let me change the topic a little bit. In finance industry, for you to be rising to the level of a partner, mm -hmm. uh, in, 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 in the U.S., there is, uh, you know, we have not so many women leaders in, in business. <laughs> now, and, 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 and I don't know what it is in China, but... Um, were there some special uh, kind of challenges uh, in that industry for being a woman leader? Um, actually, in China, first of all, we are half of the sky. So <laughs> <laughs> women is, uh, uh, no matter in the office or in home, we are leaders. This is quite a nature thing. <laughs> and the second, among our small firms, actually three partners, we have two women, more than half sky. <laughs> And the third, I think, uh, 
and luckily, you know, in um, finance industry, um, you know, it is not uh, like more technology. It's more a kind of interpersonal skill and more to the numbers. I think uh, for me or for my partners in London, Vicky, uh, we think we feel very comfortable to, mm -hmm. to work this way. And the fourth one is, uh, you know, with three partners, we are born in 1960s. Sebastian, and myself and Vicky is 1970s. And beside of us, the uh, other uh, 17 employees, they are 1980s, 1990s. Or even now, we are considering a new is a, a freshman uh, um, from the university. So there's a nature uh, gap or a kind of uh, experience. We are more experienced. So it's a very easy to build up our uh, leadership. And also second, we are doing something like arbitrage. You know, in China, I can arbitrage my knowledge in Europe, in international market. Mm -hmm. And like Vicky in London, he, she can arbitrage her knowledge in China. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is a quite an interesting way to, uh, easy way to build up the uh, leadership. So this is a lot of uh, lesson for the US then, because this is, a, this is functioning <laughs> very well. Do you believe that the gender equality that you're talking about, half the sky, uh -huh. um, is that important? Is that something that should be there? Um, to be honest, I, I enjoy a lot, uh, you know, at uh, currently my family, we have five members and uh, I'm the only woman. <laughs> so I, I enjoy it a lot. <laughs> 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 so in the, in the office, you know, first uh, in Shanghai, I'm the only boss. So, woman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, among three of us, Sebastian is a British gentleman. So, he always, you know, if we have any arguments, he always give way to us. So, <laughs> I, I don't think no, uh, there's so much necessity to put the equality on the table. I think it's quite a nature already in our life. <laughs> Great. So, uh, before you start your own company, you, when you work in the corporate, mm -hmm. you must have, like, uh, facing like a male bosses, what, what advice would you give to women uh, who work in the financial industry in the corporate world? Yeah, um, uh, actually, when I work in um, Credit Suisse, I have a very good uh, women mentor. She is a very elegant uh, French woman. <laughs> She's really nice to me. So uh, I consulted with her. Uh, uh, very frequently, you know. Um, she, uh, several words she tell me still in my mind, I would uh, like to share with uh, the uh, ladies uh, here. Uh, first is uh, when I feel guilty, I spend too much time in the office, and my, at that time I only have one boy that stay at home. Uh, she tell me that, you know, uh, it really uh, is a matter of quality of the time spent with him, not the quantity. So you, when you have time in the office or on the airplane, you need to plan very carefully. You know, in the weekend, if you spend two hours, how to make these two hours have more quality? So this is the, 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 the first one. And then the second one, she find that, you know, women in the office or in financial industry sometimes works a lot, but not much you know, in action with the boss or other colleagues. So, um, so she always remind me, below your own home. <laughs> so you needed to let everybody know that, what did you do? I think sometimes, because, uh, you know, the male uh, employees or, or bankers, they sometimes they have a drink, a cocktail together, but maybe we are not in that uh, uh, chat group. But, uh, you know, find other occasions to to let people know, what did you do? <laughs> so you mentioned having a very uh, a, a mentor. Um, you know, I have heard um, the past uh, uh, CEO of GE, um, Jack Welch, actually yeah. comment saying that he doesn't believe in mentoring because what if you are having a mentor and the mentor is absolutely bad, then you'll become bad. <laughs> so how do you go around choosing the right mentor? And how, what, what are the characteristics in a mentor that you would want people to look at before thinking about having a mentor? Actually, you know, uh, why I only mention this French woman as a mentor? <laughs> Actually, during my, um, I think, 20 years in foreign banks, I also, you know, the foreign companies always focus on this kind of things. I have several mentors. 
but why she only she, her words I still remember. So uh, there's different kinds of uh, mental. Uh, but normally it is the, the company, the HR department assign some somebody for you. So this is like uh, by, 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 by luck. But I think anyway to talk to different people in a different angle uh, or a certain uh, topic always help me to benefit a lot. All right. So now you have opened this company where you are really focused on trying to acquire or, or trying to work with European uh, mm -hmm. firms. Mm -hmm. uh, why should European firms not just go to their, um, you know, um, uh, funds, uh, private equity funds right there in their countries? Why should they be investing or getting your investment from here? This is a really interesting question. Actually, this is our fund's investment season. It's where our profit comes from. <laughs> so, uh, is our uh, we call it investment philosophy. Is uh, we try to make our China angle. So we are not targeting those very big uh, European company or not those startup company. Is the company uh, well established, have a very cons uh, stable cash flow, and uh, sometimes is a hidden champion like uh, Germany say, but they have a small market, uh, they have big sh uh, market share, but in small segment. Mm -hmm. So they, their unique technology or their products can be applied to different areas and can try the Chinese market. But they are middle-sized firms. They don't have the resource to explore China. Maybe sometime failure, or maybe they are, uh, have the uh, fear that their technology is being stolen or, or, or something else, you know. So um, it is uh, um, our talks with the European firms or the European PE fund who are the sell side, uh, most of them agree that some of their portfolio companies, the best solution for them is to sell to China, China fund or China industry. But they always uh, find that, you know, is that a good timing now? You know, uh, is Chinese, Chinese company or Chinese uh, investor ready to own a European company? So that is, most of the time, is that a question? Is not to sell, is, is, is a good timing? <laughs> right. Yes, so uh, how long does the beautiful my capital usually hold the investment or, or I would say like what kind of returns is beautiful my capital looking for? Uh, actually, we uh, like a normal LBO fund, the investment time is uh, five years from um, buy the company and we do some post investment management and then after three years we started to prepare uh, for the sale, yeah. The, 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 the investment return target is uh, the normal IRR of uh, an LBO company. Is, uh, we are talking about uh, around, uh, say, like uh, 25%, something like that. So yeah. when you acquire, do, do you normally would keep the management team intact? Or would mm -hmm. you have some, somebody replaced and have China representation in the management team? Actually, uh, um, as you may know, our first deal is into Germany. The man management is still there. Nobody left. We didn't add any anybody in. Uh, but of course, we have a very close eye on the companies uh, in operation management. So uh, in Shanghai, we have one uh, manager uh, oversee the German company in London, two partners, right? Uh, we, we find the German team, they are very professional. So we, we uh, both, of, uh, both side, we have a lot of trust on each side. So in a few minutes, we are going to ask the audience if they have any questions, so be prepared. Um, I don't know how it's going to work, but somebody will get you a mic. If you just raise your hand now uh, mm -hmm. that you have a question coming, then somebody will bring you a mic and we will take the questions from the audience as well. Um, so, you know, um, I, I asked you about that, but let me, let me ask you about in terms of when you're looking for investment and you are looking for that, what are the characteristics that you're looking for to make your investment? And to make it, no, well, to, to be in a which mm -hmm. companies will you acquire? What are the characteristics of the companies which you would not touch? You mentioned you don't want to aim for very large companies. You don't want yeah. to look at the startups. So, what are the characteristics which where you feel you'll be successful in getting the right middle-sized company? Oh, okay. Actually, you know, um, as I mentioned, I study chemistry. 
<laughs> before. So I knew it uh, had to go back to chemistry one way or the other. <laughs> so you know, a territory I feel comfortable is something around this area. Say, for example, pharmaceutical. That that is the one I feel comfortable because a lot of my classmates and my acquaintance they are in this industry, so I can easily find an expert to consult with them. And also, new material is also something related to chemistry. Some um, some like a components part, you know, components. We always think of the industry as the supply supply chain. You know, um, in China, we have a, quite a, a um, say. For example, um, a big industry like uh, uh, PetroChina, they have very good upper stream, but we don't have very good, very strong the uh, the end stream. Not uh, like the fine chemicals. We needed to refine our fine chemicals. But Europe, they have very good one. Yeah, something like that. Wow, that's yeah. a very interesting angle. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So let's switch the topic a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. What change have you seen since you have been in the finance industry for so long and both in China, you have experience in China with the European and also in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. What change have you seen in the uh, financial industry world when you first started mm -hmm. in the finance and now? And now, a lot of changes. <laughs> I can tell you a very interesting joke. My first job in Shanghai Pudong Bank, you know, and at that time, uh, I am the first, uh, not the second female PhD in the bank. And uh, they know that my English is good, although I didn't have any overseas study experience. So there's one day there is a um, visitor to visit Shanghai Pudong from New York, who is the VP. Vice President of Merrill Lynch. And uh, actually, as you now know, VP is a kind of title. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, from our banking side, we think it's really Vice President of the bank. So I accompany our Vice President <laughs> to meet up a VP from <laughs> Merrill Lynch. So at that time, you know, the finance in, in industry in China is only commercial banks. And uh, only uh, at that time, uh, a few, I remember a few security companies and uh, five uh, mutual fund. So it's very small. It's a really very small circle. And uh, but you know, after this uh, 20 years, you see, it's exploded. And there's a lot of ex um, sophisticated uh, investor and uh, very well. Uh, divided uh, different uh, uh, session. I really admire currently our Chinese peers. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, if there are any questions, raise your hand now because accordingly we will continue with our questions. Otherwise, so uh, uh, but let me let me uh, so let me continue because there are no questions. They are still warming up here. Oh, there is a question. All right, go ahead, please. Please identify yourself also. Sure. No, I mean, it's up to you. Hi, Vivian. Uh, you just mentioned, like, it's a timing of Chinese companies buying European companies, and in their mind, maybe Chinese companies are not ready to buy. So, in their opinion, what do they mean by ready, and what do you think? Okay. Um, actually, um, it's a kind of, uh, um, first, how to uh, integrate uh, a company, you know, they they think the integration technology or the skills of the Chinese company uh, is not uh, sophisticated enough to make a smooth transition. So I think this is uh, one the key concern. Second, I think is also similar. Is uh, the major problem is the culture conflict. You know, so even say like in my interaction with our uh, German management, uh, sometime even for me, you know, I live in Germany for several years and work for German banks. You know, still sometime we still feel a kind of uh, what is this, does this email mean? <laughs> and uh, I sometime I will ask my partner in London, Sebastian, to call them directly to understand what is the situation. You can imagine if I am a Chinese entrepreneur or I am a chairman of a state-owned company. So this kind of interaction, um, not so direct, so some misunderstanding, the information sharing not there, so will create a lot of trouble, I think. Yeah. 
So you actually mentioned culture, and especially when you are going in, in this business of mm -hmm. um, uh, acquiring companies, there has to be different cultures of different companies that, that you are going to be acquiring. Mm -hmm. So do you think that culture is going to be so significant that you'll have to actually impose some culture on these companies, or how do you value culture versus the strategy that you have for doing, going through this? Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, I think um, we have to respect their culture. This is very important to keep the management there to respect what they did down. And uh, actually, culture cannot make money. <laughs> <laughs> so I would rather focus more into the numbers. You know, uh, of course, you know if the culture is bad, the culture have conflict, have the com conflicts. You will definitely have bad numbers. You know, but if there is a good culture, I like. But the numbers is bad, so uh, uh, that is not wh what I want. Um, uh, this is the first. And the second, when I make my own consideration, uh, investment consideration, uh, I would uh, see the management if they are good guys to cooperate with us. They are willing to integrate into China. So uh, this is also key. If they say like, oh, I'm not so sure if I should talk to Chinese or I go to China. So then they are not our right uh, touched company. Say for example, currently um, the, our CEO of Kotenka, uh, he is a German guy, very professional, and his previous working experience is already uh, working for an Austria company who later being merged by uh, AVIC the largest aviation company in China. So he knows how to deal with Chinese people, or he has experience. So this is a kind of plus for me uh, if I, when I make my investment de decision. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's great uh, to hear. Let me ask you a different question. Mm -hmm. um, when we are looking at students who are trying to work globally in various places, mm -hmm. one of the things that has come up in many interviews that we have had Mm -hmm. uh, where people are, uh, when I ask the question, what are the characteristics that you're looking for mm -hmm. in a student uh, which are missing or sometimes missing? Mm -hmm. uh, but, and then and, and it has never been about numbers. It has always been about some communication skills. Or it, has, it has not come down to um, the, the, the question about whether you're prepared content-wise, but it is almost always we hear a lot from, from leaders in the U.S. Mm -hmm. about the students not necessarily adapting because of their own culture or because of their own communication skills, the soft skills, for example. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you feel that? And what advice would you give to uh, potential folks who would like to work, for example, in China? Mm -hmm. And they are, what kind of attributes would you, would you be looking for as a business leader here? Mm -hmm. Actually, you know, um, in our team, we, we have... Um, uh, um, investment manager. He grew up in the United States and then now moved to Shanghai and uh, worked for, for us. Actually, he oversees the, the company. He's a great guy, you know, gr very good at uh, academic and very solid. Uh, I think um, we are a small company, so inside the communication is very easy. If he is very much American, very straightforward, we, we, we know that. So we give him more, more space. And he also straight for, forward to us, say like, oh, this Excel, this document is not systematic. I don't like this. I will <laughs> like this. So um, this is a kind of interaction. I think, uh, uh, you know, in the personal skill, he has already built up a lot in US, in the university, or in his previous uh, companies. And the only thing um, missing is uh, everybody work together. We needed to, uh, I think as a company, we needed to, um, most of company in China now, is, especially in like a, a financial industry, they are trying to build up a culture to integrate all different backgrounds. So um, for the character looks, I think interpersonal skill uh, is uh, important. For me, I would more focus on attitude. So are you willing to work hard? Are you willing to deliver? So that is, uh, if I, higher person, I would more look into this side, because academic background, skills, all this already there, a lot of talents, I think, yeah. So it is the grit that you're looking for, grit. somebody who is willing to work hard, somebody yeah. who has the right attitude to fit in, adapt, yeah. and, and, and be prepared to be integrated in the company's culture, yeah. and those are yeah. important attributes also, I, I think those are some of the common 
yeah, yeah, uh, great. parts yeah. of things between mm -hmm. the two. Uh, it's interesting to see the differences sometimes. <laughs> um, so, any other questions, anybody? Yes, there are some questions in the front. If you could bring the mic, please. Hi, Vivian. Thank you for your sharing. It's very um, sincere. Um, so I'm an alumni of GW and now an entrepreneur in so-called black technology, big health, if uh -huh. you know what I mean. It's a Chinglish translation. Uh, but we, we're selling our products to uh, some one belt, one road countries like Africa, South, uh, East, uh, Southeast or Russia, etc. And uh, our products are cosmetics. Uh, patches or Chinese herbal food therapy. So we're thinking of expanding in Europe and America. What do you think from investment banking or other perspective? What do you think of this industry's um, expansion, especially for Chinese entrepreneurs' expansion potentials in Europe and at America? Thank you. I, I think your um, your products is more like into the regu uh, regulatory. Uh, regularly uh, market, uh, you know, you need uh, to register in, say, like in Europe, if it is a medical device or or uh, how high the the disposable items related, so it's a regulated market. So you need to consult with the European. They have a lot of professional consulting firms. How to apply the license or get the your products registered uh, there, and uh, need to find. Uh, different uh, distribution network there. So um, my experience is uh, uh, we have uh, uh, one LP who uh, his product is in China, but uh, he want to um, go into uh, Europe. So he's looking for, first uh, he's looking for, say like, uh, uh, buy a company who can do the distribution for him. But uh, later he find out, uh, you know, first, uh, Nobody want to sell. <laughs> it's a very good business there, and uh, and the second, uh, you know, it doesn't make that much sense. You know, he's uh, especially when the first the sales revenue for the first five years, if you enter enter into new market, is not that big. So doesn't ma uh, makes more sense to to a, a big capital expense and uh, to get back a small uh, revenue. So. Um, for your business, I think the first is regulated, so needed to consult with the local uh, local firms how to enter into that. <laughs> Hi there. Uh, my name is Andrew. I'm a School of Business alumnus. Uh, thank you for being here. Xie uh, Xianyi. My question is, you were speaking about culture just a few minutes ago. Um, what is your personal leadership philosophy or style, and how has it changed depending on the milestones throughout your career? Can you, can you repeat again? Sure. The, the what is your personal leadership philosophy or style, uh -huh. and how has it changed depending on the milestones in your career? Uh -huh. Actually, in investment banking, I'm a small team leader. <laughs> you know, we are very you know, small head account, you know, as a China um, team leader. So uh, at that time, is really um, the leader is led by your own work. You know, you needed to very hands-on on every deal or every client pitch. So that is very to the detail, to the daily works, and work very closely um, with your team members. And uh, when I started my entrepreneurship, so the, the first thing is uh, I mentioned the, the generation gap, right? And uh, uh, second is, uh, you know, the nature of business has already changed. That is the big banks, and now is the uh, small firms. All those small firms, as a leader, I have a lot of things to handle. In Credit Suisse, I don't need to handle HR things, or accounting things, or the uh, tax things, or the government license things. But here, I have to do everything. I have to and talk to the Jixie, the founder supervision department, and also tax office. So a, a lot of various different things. So now I need a change to my leadership style from the down to the earth daily job into you have to delegate, <laughs> you have to trust. And first of all, you have to find the person you can trust, and then you have 100% trust on him or her. So I think it's two uh, different uh, change. And uh, uh, for the second, is more challenging. It's, a real, it's a really leadership. 
But there was one more question here in the front. Hi, hello. My name is John Liu. I am not alone. I am uh, one of the uh, university counselors at an international school here in Shanghai. Mm -hmm. So my job is to help students consider applying to university abroad. Um, and what we've seen here, uh, a trend is more, many more of international students applying to universities in China. So as a trustee of, of a university, can you talk a little bit about what do you see as far as China university education? What are their priorities? And then if you were to, have, to give feedback, you know, what would you want the education at University of China to change or advance more in order to create you know, stronger employees in, in the sector? Thank you. Yes, actually, uh, this question is I have a lot of thought about. Because my son here is a grade 10. He's also uh, about to prepare for college application. And then myself, as I mentioned, I went back to Fudan, talked to the kids there frequently, or professors. And uh, later this session, uh, I will go for the economic forum, is about the science tech, the startup companies. I think, you know, uh, in Credit Suisse time, we have the uh, young uh, recruiting um, people from China's top university, uh, from Hong Kong, uh, from United States, from, from Europe. They are all excellent. Uh, uh, kids or young young men, young women, uh, but they also have the different things. You know, uh, the um, the Chinese students like myself, right, uh, from Peking University, Tsinghua, Beijing, Fujian, we are very smart. You know, we, without this brain, we cannot enter into the university. And the second, we are very work hard. I think the 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 kids stay overnight with me in the office always. <laughs> Is it at in Hong Kong? Is it from mainland and China? What is, uh, lack is, you know, uh, uh, first is interpersonal skill. They are more to themselves. They are also sometimes they are led by other teams. They do every assignment in time in a very excellent purpose. But the the interpersonal, the uh, social part. Is a, is a difficult, different. Like, like my mentor point out to me, say that you need to blow your own horn, you need to talk to different people in the banks. So this is one side. And the, the second side is the big picture of manage a project normally is in the, you know, in the kids who educated in overseas or in uh, other Asia universities. So um, the, my advice if I, can have to the Chinese universities, I think we will focus more not on the books only, especially to the undergraduate or masters, you know, not only to the knowledge or not only focus on the exam, but more to the application in the future career. Yeah. Great. I think we have time for one or two more questions here in the front. There's a question. Okay, I have two questions. One is, I'm not working in the financial field, but I'm curious that I know that your fund is like focused on the overseas investment. But I, as, I, as far as I know that in China, right now the, the central government, maybe they control the outflow of the uh, foreign currency. So is there any obstacles for your overseas uh, investment? The, that's the first question. And the second question is that I know that you have three kids Right. So, and uh, I know that you always said you will um, stay uh, at very late night, and I want to know that how do you balance uh, work and life, and how do you mentor your kids? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, the, the first one is uh, uh, quite a professional question, so, you know. Uh, since 2016, so, you know, the government uh, imposed a very strict uh, uh, capital outflow uh, policies. So currently, uh, our investment, we found we raised the money here in China or in renminbi, parked here in Shanghai. Uh, every deal, we do deal by deal, the, we call the SPV. Uh, SPV in Shanghai, the free trade zone, we register a company or limited partnership company. Um, and then for this single project, we apply for ODI, Overseas uh, Direct Investment Quota. So um, I think it, um, this, uh, of course, is uh, additional uh, trouble or risk. Sometimes our counterparties in Europe, they ask for a penalty if the government didn't approve our ODI. So make, because this makes the deal a lot of uncertainty. So this is one 
part we have to overcome. And the good news is that since 2016, the, uh, the regulators, they become more and more you know, uh, sophisticated. They know what questions they are asked, and they can e uh, even uh, accept the English documents. Say, for example, they want to review the SPA, but we only have the English version. They say, okay, no, no problem. You just give me the English version. So my experience last, last year, say like uh, on September, we signed the SPA, and we closed the deal in November. So in these two months, we managed to get the ODI and also fund the move out to Europe. So uh, we really do appreciate the uh, local government officers uh, efficient communication with us. And, uh, and the fund move is quite smooth. And uh, later they comment, say, because you are a real overseas investment. <laughs> so because they have past experience, some, some fake one. So that's why they don't want. <laughs> For a, a and second, you have a second, a second question, question, yes, question. <laughs> that is correct. Se second question I would love to, to ask is, uh, uh, have three boys. One is uh, 15, grade 10, another two is still in, 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 in kindergartens, you know. Uh, so um, to, to balance is uh, uh, I make my office near my home, <laughs> five minutes <laughs> by car, and I live a place next to the school. The school is just across the street. <laughs> of course, I have the ability to, 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 uh, to, to afford this uh, arrangement. I think this is very important to me. And uh, the second is uh, make use of all the, um, the, the small time. Say, like, uh, on the way, um, I send the kids to school. Uh, so I talk to the Chinese poem, whatever, to him. I make most use of this time. And when the kids, one is in the playground, and I shoot another kid into her, his classroom, we pass the uh, reading area, I grab five minutes to read one book for him before he go to the <laughs> classroom. And uh, uh, the third one is uh, feel their <laughs> timetable very full. Like currently, I'm talking here, they are in the piano uh, school. <laughs> And the other one is the work zone in the ducks, the, the, the campers. And my elder one is in Beijing volleyball games. So make sure they, everybody's calendar. So on my, uh, my, my phone, I have four calendar. One calendar is for myself. And then each guy has one calendar. <laughs> there is one more question here. And maybe that will be the last question. Hi, Dr. Wong. Uh, my name is Tracy, and I'm with GW uh, School of Business, class of 20, 2018. Uh, so my question is, uh, since you've been in the industry, especially the financial sector, for years or decades, uh, I'm pretty sure there must be like a lot of up and downs. So how do you manage yourself to uh, stay passionate and stay energetic about what you're doing and about your job? Thank you. You know, there's a lot of things, you know. Those up things I cannot remember so clearly, but the downs I cannot forget. Sometimes it's still go back to my dream. <laughs> this kind of nightmare. <laughs> you know, there's one part is, say, like in Fortis Bank. You know, I prepared two years, a very big deal. It's a kind of a, one of the largest interest rate swap. At that, at that time, I'm doing derivative swaps. But the night when we, we called the square the deal, we do the trade, I, I wait in my dealing room, and the trade didn't come in. They go to another bank. So basically, the two years' hard work is gone. So that is the first ever for me. Because in my personal life, I all the way very smooth, good school, good, better, good job. So that is the first uh, failure. So I, I cannot, to be honest, I cannot uh, recover for one week. I, I still remember it's a Friday night. And it's a sun, a Saturday, I, I, I bring my son to Ocean Park in Hong Kong. So the whole day in Ocean Park, I like working in the cloud. <laughs> So, but you know, everything will pass after you know after this one week. Um, I f suddenly I find out I, I get famous in Hong Kong financial market because of this deal. 
<laughs> so everybody talking about. So that's why I left this for the burn and then go to Credit Suisse because the boss there know that I work really hard for this deal and lose the deal is not my fault. Something like that. So um, currently, I sometimes I share with my uh, older kids about this up and turns. You, you know, really, if no 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 dance, you cannot feel the the joy of your your successful. Yeah. Well. Well, so, Israel, you, yeah. let's thank her, um, of course. Uh, I think it's been a very entertaining conversation, and <laughs> thanks for sharing your experience and your words of wisdom. Uh, and especially uh, before that, when Isabella and I were talking, she was telling me that you have four different things that you have to go to today, so really making the time <laughs> and, and, and being uh, amongst us today, really appreciate your help. Thank you so much. Thank you to give me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you for listening. <laughs> And now for all those of you, thank you also for being here today. And we have a reception on the 37th floor, I believe. Uh, so I hope you'll all join us there. Thank you again very much. <laughs>